Rick, happy Tuesday. How are you today? Good. Happy Tuesday, Megan. It's uh, good. It's uh, what, the third week of the year? I'll third week track. of the year. There are gale force winds outside. And, you know, yeah. Monday or Saturday or, you know, it was like 85 degrees. And now it's like... Oh, what, 60? 65? I don't know. It's really cold. I know it's cold. Well, for us, I mean, right? I mean, this is not blowing oh snow. We could, be in, we could be in like Green Bay, right? I think oh this God. is sports weather in Green Bay. <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> this is affirmation that I cannot retire anywhere cold, you know? No, no kidding. I hate weather. I like, I, I need like I 325 like days of the <laughs> sun know. and clear sky. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. All right. So we are back today with our hot tips for yeah. uh, buyers and sellers to help them mm -hmm. be the very best versions of themselves when they are purchasing and selling real estate. And our topic today is the things you don't do when you're trying to uh, obtain a mortgage. Get a mortgage. Yeah, man. I, I, and they're actually, they're all really cool. And I've, you know, in my 40 years, now it's 40 years this spring I've been doing this. I, I don't like to tell people how long you've been doing it because <laughs> I feel like, first of all, I don't feel like you look like you're been doing this for 40 years. But, um, uh, I mean, I just feel so absurd saying it like, yeah, he's been a mortgage <laughs> broker or, you know, in the mortgage business for 40 years. I'll tell you what, Carter was in office. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> well, well, congratulations. Oh, I, know. I think. <laughs> I'm a survivor. <laughs> 40 years. It's the only I job know. you've ever had in this industry. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Well, tell <laughs> us. What have you seen? What do people do oh my gosh. that they should not do when, when they're trying to get a mortgage? Well, let's look at this information. Uh, one, the first is do not change bank accounts. <laughs> and so here's the thing about mortgage loans. This is super critical and it's been this way from day one that I've been in the business. The source of your funds for the down payment and closing costs are very important and they have to be traceable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to account for all of those monies and where they came from, and they've got to be from sources that we can verify that are legitimate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you uh, people will, I'll get a phone call, for example. Um, it's interesting, it's like when I talk to people on, on the initial pre fall, I'll say things like, Well, how much do you have for down payment closing costs? Mm -hmm. Let's say like uh, 10%. I go, okay, <laughs> you know, 10% of what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I've got, I can get like, you know, 30,000. Okay, so where's the 30,000? Well, don't worry, I'll get that. I got, I got some money put aside. Uh, no, 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 no. Just help me out here. My job is to help you, right? We'll get you to the finish line, but I have to answer these questions so I can help you get there, okay? Right. And then we start uncovering all this stuff. So that's the first process. But sometimes people during the middle of an escrow mm -hmm. will change bank accounts. It's like it's like a moving target, right? right? Oh, I open this kind of transfer money here. I transfer money there. Well, you can do that, but we have to be able to trace all those funds, paper trail it. Right. You just can't well, open an account and move things I mean, around. I don't think I don't think people realize how um, how the the cash market is. Like you could not walk yeah. into the bank with what is it, $2,500 and deposit it without filling out a form that says where you got it from. I mean, like they wanna know where you got all your cash from. Are you laundering it? Do you work for Al Qaeda? What's the deal, you know? Well, there's a form at the bank called SARS, S-A-R-S, mm -hmm. okay? And so if you put, I think it's actually $10,000 or more cash in the bank, mm -hmm. uh, they fill out a form secretly that they report to the government. Mm -hmm. and then they'll go after you for where that money came from. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. So yeah, you gotta you gotta account for all your cash. You can't be yeah. deep off it and all around. You can't put in mattress money and then all of a sudden it's seasoned. Like, right? You gotta watch your bank account. Exactly right. Um, the other one is, do not apply for credit cards or other credit accounts. You'd be surprised how often I get that. Well, um, Rick, it's a you... sale. It's a sale at Best Buy, so I can get all of my new appliances for my exactly new house. Exactly right. And exactly right. It's two weeks before closing, and I just opened up a ten thousand dollar credit line. Yeah. Yep. Not to say that you can't get a loan if you do that, but just don't 
catch us by surprise. It's risky. Right? It's kind of risky. It risky. I would I would wait until the next sale. Yeah. yeah. My guidance always 100% of the time is buy all the appliances you want, but do it the day after close of escrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So do not go out and, and people have gone out and but they bought cars, things like that. Oh, yeah, find a great oh. deal on a car. Oh, no, don't Lord do that. Lord have mercy. I, I think in my 22 years, I've had an escrow fall out because somebody went and bought a car. It's like, friends, friends, your mortgage amount that you can afford to pay is based off of your uh, debt to income ratio. If you add more mm. debt, then that messes up your ratio and that might knock you right out of qualifying or knock you out of uh, the interest rate that you th were thinking that you yeah. were getting. I mean, all kinds of complications potentially. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I had a transaction recently where um, he was in an escrow mm -hmm. and he ready for this. He didn't tell us he, he co-signed uh -oh. for our mortgage for his oh. kids. Well, good intentions gone wrong. <laughs> and I and I, I said, uh, you know, his name was Roger. I said, Roger, what happened? Oh, yeah, my son called me. They were buying a new construction house someplace, and the lender couldn't approve their loan. They needed to co-sign. And I said, yeah, help out. I said, I, yeah, I know that. But now we have to count that debt because, it's, you know, if you co-sign on a mortgage for somebody, you can do that. But to not count that debt against you, you have to have a 12-month history of the other party making those payments. Oh, about that 12-month history, you count 100% debt against that borrower. 100%. And it gets complicated. And then people, yeah. you know, they complain, why are you asking me so many questions? What in the hell do you I have know, to right? know that for? Well, it's like, you know, because yeah. you have to. It's part of the, uh, what do you call those guidelines? That's, you know. The, the little guideline thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just say when that happens. <laughs> uh, damn it. <laughs> I know. And then he goes, goes Rick, you know, because I didn't even think about it. I mean, my kid called me up and said, Daddy, need help. I go, yeah, I'll help. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, but you know, but in that case, it worked out because he's still qualified. But he goes, Rick, I didn't even think about it. Those things yeah. we don't think about sometimes, right? So we have you to just be know. mindful of that process. You don't know what you don't know, you know. Yeah. So if you're in escrow, just ask your loan officer before you do anything with your money. Right. Uh, there was don't deposit cash into your bank account before speaking to your loan officer. That's mm -hmm. you know we kind of talked about that. I mean. Again, that goes back to tracing all the funds, paper trail, all the funds, right? Mm -hmm. And so, by the way, it's okay to do that because if we can show it as gift funds and we can trace those funds, that's certainly allowable. But mm -hmm. just don't do it without telling us because there's a process to follow to trace that. If you do it out of, out of a certain order, then you know, it messes up the whole process and then you're in trouble again. Right. Want, I mean, we can still do it. It just complicates it, makes it more labor intensive and a lot more work and delays and we don't want to do that right yeah. yeah i mean things are stressful enough like you know just just try to not uh create any more stress in your real estate transaction yeah, exactly we have enough going on right yeah. yeah and by the way when 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 borrowers do this stuff it's it's well intentioned it's very innocent it's but you know they just don't know right it's like we said but they don't know what they don't know but that's why they have us to help them to know what they should know to get them to the finish line mm -hmm. and do it, do it the right way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one, the other one is don't co-sign for any other loans or anybody on a loan. We talked about that. Yeah, that's, uh, again, well-intentioned and we just don't want to do that until after mm -hmm. close of escrow. The, and the last item is interesting is, is do not make any job changes without mm -hmm. talking to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's surprising how often someone will make a job change right in the middle of an escrow. I've had a couple of transactions where we get, because by the way, on all loans, every lender, one of the functions right before closing, easy, even though we verified the employment, we approved the loan, got all the verifications and so on. Before closing, mm -hmm. there's always a quality control QC phone call to the employer to verify they're still employed mm -hmm. every time. It's always yeah. been that way. I had, a, I had a transaction about, I don't know, 25 years ago. I never forgot it. We were down. We had signed his loan documents. Um, money in escrow. They have funding. I get a phone call from my funder. And she says, hey, Rick, he, uh, he doesn't work there anymore. <laughs> I go, well, that, that's, that, that can't be. I just talked to him like two days ago. I called him at work. Something's wrong. Let me give him a call. 
I called him up. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, Rick. I, yeah, I signed my loan documents, put my money in the escrow, try again? and then I and then I just I quit my job and I became self-employed. <laughs> That's okay, right? I signed my docs, and I go uh, get back to that job right now. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get back take to a, work. Take a bunt cake and an apology, and <laughs> exactly suck it up. Get back to work. I don't care what you do after you close the escrow, but right now you're still employed. Okay. Right. Yeah. You know, again, very innocent, right? Right. You know, people don't do things intentionally and mess up their loan. They just don't know what they don't know. Right, exactly. Well, yeah. that's some very good advice. Um, let me think. Can we think of anything else? I can think of something. When you're in escrow and you are a renter and you're going to be a homeowner, don't mm -hmm. give notice to your rental until you have loan approval yeah, and idea. you've been told you're good to go because... Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know you don't want to pay the extra two weeks of overlap with the rental and the right. house payment, but it would be worth it to not be homeless, you know, in case your loan, something doesn't work out. There's a delay know. of some sort. So yeah, can't close on time. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, it's like a, a closing date is really, I mean, you know how we are. We just hammered out, stick to the date, but every once in a while, you're going to get a wild card and you're going to be closing late and it's going to be ridiculous and everybody's going to be happens. upset, but at least mm -hmm. you won't be homeless, you know? So just right. wait until you know, it's good to go. You might have some overlap, but, um, it, it's good right. to just be, you know, better to be safe than sorry. And by the way, overlap is not a bad thing because it gives time to move out of the house. You don't know. have to do it 24 it's hours. Good. You can do it over a period yeah. of a week or so, right? It's a lot pay. less stressful. Yeah, you could paint, you can Yeah, you can install paint, you can things. do some things around the house, you can move things yeah. a little bit at a time, less stress. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's worth yeah. the extra two weeks to do it that way. Exactly. In my opinion. I know, me too. Yeah. I don't like a lot of extra stress though. So that was how that yeah. would be how I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like drama free, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ugh, I think I'm gonna get that tattoo. I'm gonna make a tattoo. This is drama free. <laughs> drama free zone exactly. anyway all right well good well those are some really really uh helpful t hints and i'm going to post this infographic that was the inspiration of our talk today from mm -hmm. uh, keeping current matters and again if you know anyone that is buying or selling and they need to see our videos we have all of our videos on youtube i don't know how many there are now i don't i just might this might be what? our 40th i'm not sure we, we 40, did it i'm guessing 30 40 we started we didn't get our first the, back uh, like in March, right? Last year? Yeah, we started. Around March? We, I want to say March. Yeah, we started in the pandemic. Yeah, and this, right the this was our now. pandemic project. And yeah. I will tell you um, right now we have, let's see, videos. This is our 38th episode. Man, we have 38. For 38. I know. Um, we talk about uh, HOAs. We talk about mm -hmm. um, interest rates. We talk about um, what's happening in the house. We talk about everything. Anyway, check out my YouTube channel and you can see all the videos that we made and get uh, some little bit of education before you go out and make the biggest purchase of your life, probably. All right, everybody, have a good week. Stay safe, stay warm, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Megan. See ya.